Here are some compromising photographs that the government doesn't want you to see. Modern Ships is a very popular Chinese magazine, especially for the quality of its articles. Recently, Modern Ships published an article presenting the new nugget of the army, the new H6N bomber. From the first lines, the article presents a monstrous car, but the article is also accompanied by a photo where the bomber is so visible that we can see something that the Chinese government does not necessarily want us to see. If some people were amazed by the bomber, others were attracted by the huge ballistic missile attached to its fuselage. And the missile looked very much like one of the families of ballistic weapons deployed by the Chinese People Liberation Army's rocket force as carrier killers. A photo that ruffled the feathers of Western defense analysts, among them, one Malcolm Davis, who put his finger on the great threat such a missile poses to U.S. carrier groups near the Spratly Islands. To save the magazine's gore, the Chinese government will claim that the missile in the photo was automatically generated by computer using computer graphics. What a surprise. In any case, it is a big mistake for the Chinese magazine, which surely had to be reprimanded for that, and which surely lost its rating and its credibility with the Chinese government. It will be a nice lesson for him. During a press release that took place just after the signing of an agreement between the United States and Mexico, the former American president Donald Trump wanted to taunt the journalists by presenting them the piece of paper testifying to the agreement except that he made a mistake by brandishing it a little too close to the crowd of journalists who were at his feet while the agreement should remain confidential. Indeed, in front of a crowd of journalists thirsty for information, the ex-president took out of his jacket the piece of paper and said with a snide look, No, I will let Mexico disclose it at the right time. Except that he did not notice that he had just done it instead of Mexico City. The sheet he held up was watermarked especially since the sunlight also helped photographers to quickly decipher what was written on it. An upteenth blunder on the part of Trump, who in order to not admit his fault, declared on Twitter that the vast majority of the agreement with Mexico has not yet been revealed. This incident will have taught him to never again taunt journalists who can sometimes be more devious than him. Britain has been through several wars in the past, and as it always is in conflict with other countries, it is unlikely that a war will break out overnight. So in order not to be caught unawares and to be ready to face any bombing and nuclear attack, the country has built a sprawling underground city that is supposed to be a secret. Well, now that it is not, we tell you about it in detail with pictures. In this city, it is planned that in case of an attack, the governmental personalities come to hide there. It can accommodate 4,000 people in complete isolation with bathrooms, running water, and 12 tanks of fuel, allowing survival for three months. It has 96 kilometers of underground roads with signs, electric buggies, a switchboard, hospitals, canteens, laundry facilities, accommodation, and even a bakery so that you don't run out of chocolate rolls. The site is located 30 meters below Corsham in Wilshire. It was built in the late 1950s with tensions were rising between the West and the Soviet Union, and the reality of nuclear war became more than apparent. The plans assumed that the United Kingdom would be hit by 132 atomic bombs. Fortunately, this did not happen and the site remained empty until it deteriorated. The site, which was kept secret at the time, was regularly maintained until 1991 when conservation work became too expensive. Today, Great Britain could make it a historical site to visit to its tourists. In August 2019, the former U.S. president who was in the midst of diplomatic skirmishes with Iran wanted to deny the involvement of the United States in an alleged smoke explosion that occurred earlier in the country during an attempted rocket launch that hit the Semmen launch base. Except that he commits another blunder. Donald Trump tweets a message denying any involvement of the United States in the accident, accompanying it with a photo taken by the U.S. intelligence services, which was normally classified defense. That's just like Trump. The high-resolution photo taken at low altitude showed the launch pad and its immediate surroundings just after the explosion with explanations describing exactly the damage caused by the incident. Thus, thanks to Trump's indiscretion, it was known that this accident caused a great deal of material loss, namely two support vehicles, the booster trailer, the assembly tower of the launch pad, and the tractor erector launcher. Crucial information which the United States is not supposed to have and which proves that it has colossal means to obtain all information on Iran. Trump will thus have revealed new details on the capabilities, which should remain secret, of the U.S. government in terms of intelligence gathering. One more stupid thing to add to his record. But at least he managed to make some people laugh. It is becoming increasingly clear that the Chinese government is hiding from the world a bitter reality about the Uyghurs. 
living in remote camps, which they disguise as vocational training centers in order to avoid any interplanetary scandal. But recently, thousands of secret documents have been stolen from Chinese police computers, revealing the unjust punishment of the Uyghurs. The 100,000 documents, including photos, letters, and emails are clear. Children, adults, and entire families are living the massive repression they call re-education, while the Chinese government tries to make the rest of the world believe otherwise. This hacking, which has had some good, has completely exposed the Chinese government. The latter must now face the accusations that overwhelm it. To be continued. One evening in 2020, Boris Johnson, who was supposed to be in confinement like the rest of the world, suddenly felt like celebrating. He invited some friends for a nice dinner in Downing Street, around a nice table with several bottles of wine. Of course, he had no right to hold a gathering when everyone else had to keep to themselves, but that night, a photo of him leaked. Oh, he didn't plan that. The next day, the photo was on the front page of the newspapers. It showed a Boris Johnson holding a glass of wine and chatting with some friends. We would later learn that it was a farewell party for the head of communications, Lee Kane. The photo, along with other festive events organized within the circles of power during the pandemic, provoked a media outcry that was dubbed Party Game and put Johnson in a hell of a mess as he had to set an example for the millions of citizens desperate to cope with the situation. Of course, the Prime Minister will deny these accusations. He'll get away with the going away party, but he won't escape a fine for attending a surprise birthday party for his 56th birthday. But at least he will have had a good time. You are quietly browsing the net, looking for news in the world of politics, and here you come across a very disturbing photo and article. Emmanuel Macron shaking hands with Bill Gates, with the title, Bill Gates and even Emmanuel Macron, who belong to the new world order that is supposed to govern us all. Intrigued, you do your research and learn that these rumors were sparked by a certain multicolored brooch worn by several heads of state and politicians around the world as a sign of their allegiance. The conspiracists believe that this is a secret badge that is worn by all members of the New World Order. But the truth is that it is a 17-color badge that indicates membership in a UN program, which these men were at events they organize. You were afraid, weren't you? There was no need to panic. You'll learn not to believe the rumors on the internet. Since the outbreak of the war between Russia and Ukraine, the famous hacker collective Anonymous, which has been a little too discreet for some time, has decided to come back in force and make a major comeback. It has declared a war of completely different kind on Russia, a war that has taken the form of a grandiose cyber attack. Shortly after warning Russia that it would attack, Anonymous put its plan into action and launched a series of cyber attacks against the Russian state news agency TASS and the Russia Today website accessing images of the war in Ukraine and broadcasting them on television instead of commercials, at a time when viewing rates are at their highest and everyone is glued to their screens. The goal is to awaken the conscience of Russians who would be victims of state censorship sponsored by Roskomnadzor. Thus, on March 11, 2022, more than 820 gigabytes of sensitive and confidential data were stolen, a media scandal that will certainly not leave Putin silent and indifferent. Anonymous will have succeeded in alienating the great Russian despot, but they will also have succeeded in opening the eyes of the Russians on the reality that surrounds them, and I believe that for once, they have been appreciated for that. You are doing a little research on Google Maps as part of a class project dealing with military bases around the world, and you have to talk about Greek military bases, when suddenly you are drawn to something strange. You notice there on the map a sort of blurred area. After some research, you learn that it is in fact a military base in Athens named Ai Anagari. You have the eyes of an eagle because normally the base cannot be seen by everyone. On the map, the area looks so blurry that no Google user can see it clearly. This secret location is one of the most intriguing places in Greece. Sure, it can be explored, but nothing inside filters out. On the other hand, you will never know why such a mysterious place has been hidden from the world's view, and that annoys you a bit. I can feel you very frustrated. However, you can make yourself believe that it is perhaps a zone to ensure the security of the military in case of war. Besides, many governmental or military centers are censored by Google Maps for these reasons. The good thing is that you can talk about it in your presentation and impress your history geography teacher. Boyd Bushman was an ordinary American living in Tucson, Arizona. For much of his life, the late American claimed to talk to extraterrestrials and had tangible proof of what he was saying. Thus, a few months before his death, Bushman would have insisted once again on the fact that he maintained real communications with extraterrestrials coming from a certain planet named Quintumnia, and that this information was supposed to remain secret because the American authorities did not want it to be revealed. 
He revealed that these aliens also had camps and that they were divided into two, the Wranglers and the Rustlers. And he had proof. In an interview given to aeronautical designer Mark Patterson, the engineer who worked in the large military industrial company Skunk Works of Lockheed Martin Space System Company showed some mind-blowing photos. He also added that having worked for a long time on the mysterious Area 51, he was certain that the Air Force base in Southern Nevada had ties to aliens. He even gave descriptions. They would be about six feet tall, have long thin fingers, webbed feet, and would be a few hundred years old, or more than 230 years old. Bushman declared that they would have taken more than 45 years to reach the Earth from their planet. They took a long time. Although he put forward palpable evidence, Boyd Bushman had a hard time being credible with a large number of American citizens. In any case, whether he was right or wrong, he had his little moment of glory before his death. Now tell us in the comments what you think of these photographs that governments don't want us to see. And don't forget to subscribe and click here to watch another of our videos.